Hello there everyone, and welcome to my 100% playthrough of Ash's Dead Man Walking on Apocalypse. This is map 51, Dead Man Walking. I didn't see it until it was too late. My brain screamed ambush just as the first bullet tore into my chest. I suppose it's inevitable that you run into folks who are more crafty than you are. The thought doesn't do much to ease the pain of a sucking chest wound. I black out as they roll me into the ditch. Last thing I hear is them laughing as they ride off on my bike. The sons of bitches. They didn't figure on one thing. I'm harder to kill than most. I'm going to find these bastards. And welcome. Yes, we are playing Doom this time, or a total conversion of Doom. Now you can call it mod, total conversion, whatever you want. Make sure the sounds are not overly loud here. I think I can put this down to 0.15. So yes, this is Ash's Dead Man Walking. And this is technically the second episode that was released. Um, but chronologically, this is the first episode of three. This is the prequel episode to the original episode that came out, the first one, uh, which is called Ashes 2063. So I decided, you know what, we'll just do this, just like with Quake, we'll do it uh, chronologically. And as you can see, well, you should see quite a few things different. So for starters, um, provided it's working, which I, hopefully it is, you should see at the top left a little mouse and keyboard uh, reader, I guess you would call it, the no board. I decided to give that a try, see if I like it. Um, on the top right, you'll see a uh, stats overlay, I guess you would call it. Um, that is, and I, and I will uh, post the file names of all these, as well as probably also the links uh, to all these that I found. So this is called levelinfo.pk7. It is basically just a HUD overlay that allows me to see, you know, the uh, kills, items, and secrets. Now, typically, I would just use the alt HUD like this, the alternative HUD, but the alternative HUD for Ashes isn't quite as good because there's a lot of stuff that it doesn't show. Um, and I'll point those out, like right there at the bottom right, right below the ammo counter. So you have your 45 Colt, your 9mm, your 12 gauge, your slugs, which is for a sniper rifle, uh, gas, which is for a flamethrower, BOM is bomb, which is pipe bombs, and 308, which is 308 uh, Winchester, I believe. That's for a different kind of rifle. But below all that, you'll see what looks like money. And that's because that's exactly what it is. Uh, scrap, actually. So in this game, you collect scrap. That's what the items are, along with some other things. And scrap is worth money. I think it's five bucks per piece of scrap. And you can use that to, uh, in the first two episodes anyway, to buy things. You can buy medical equipment. You can buy ammo. You can buy weapons. And then in the third and final, or uh, not really final, but most recent episode, it also serves a secondary purpose. And I will get to that when I actually get to the episode. Um, so there's that as well. Oh, but but that is why I don't use the... Uh, oop, not that. <laughs> That's why I don't use this alternate HUD here. It just doesn't... It also doesn't look as good. And the version of this that I'm playing is the Ashes standalone version 1.02. That's why it has a clearer looking font. Past versions of this I played, the font was very hard to read at times. So I decided to go ahead and give these new versions a whirl. And uh, so far, I've really liked it. So this is the most current version of Ashes Standalone, which has both... I'll go ahead and show you here. It has the tutorial level, which is part of Ashes 2063, which I will play when we get to that. And then you have Dead Man Walking, which is this episode. This is the prequel episode. So this particular episode has technically four maps. Now, I was not kidding in the intro when I said this is map 51. It is indeed map 51. That's just how Vostiok and uh, Reformed Joe, who actually made this episode. Vostiok, I don't know if he had any involvement with Dead Man Walking. That may have just been Reformed Joe. But that's just what these maps are labeled as. 51 through 54. There's four maps. One of those, uh, which is actually the second map, is a sanctuary map of sorts. Nothing to kill there, no secrets to find. So really, this episode is only three levels. Now, these levels are longer than Ash's 2063s, or at least... the the majority of them, um, and I'm and will, I'm willing to bet that the trade-off is that the levels themselves are longer, and these levels are definitely longer. 
I've already prattled on long enough, but holy crap, look at these gas prices. Eight sixty three a gallon for regular, eight eighty five for plus. Free cool frog toy. That frog looks, uh... If that thing below the glasses is his mouth, he looks kind of pissed. Anyway, I have prattled on long enough, like I've said before. So let's just go and, uh, collect some junk, shall we? Now, for this playthrough, I will make an effort to... I am going to get all the secrets, naturally, and all the kills. And I am also going to try to get all the items. Now... There is a certain item in this episode, or in this uh, mod, I should say, in all three episodes, that are tagged as items, but you can only carry a limited number of them. And I'll go ahead and spoil this. Those are the first aid kits. You can only carry ten of those. So if you already have ten, you can't pick up any more, and those will be items that we just can't pick up unless I decide to use it for whatever reason. So you'll see as we go along. This, uh, uh, this here is also an item. The Solar Lantern. Ooh. Shiny. So yeah, that does exactly what it uh, sounds like. It lights up dark environments. And you'll also notice, to the left of the ammo and money count, see that little meter that's slowly going down? That is the power cell of the lantern. This thing recharges in sunlight. Well, since this is a nighttime-based level, there is no sunlight, so it won't be able to recharge. We won't really be using this that much, if, <clears throat> if at all, because the brightness is already set up enough anyway. I don't want these videos to be too dark for YouTube, so that's one of the main reasons why. But, yeah. And there will be a bit of dialogue in this game, and I'll go ahead and run through that. I'll try not to focus on it for too long, but let's check with this old man here. Let's see if I can do some voice acting here. <clears throat> I saw the whole thing. Jesus Christ. I can't believe you're alive. Yeah, I feel the same way. You should feel lucky. When the Ripper set out to kill someone, they usually finish the job. I guess they were too excited about that bike of yours. Rippers? They sound like nice folks. Where can I find them? I'm not sure. They're new to the area. Though, they seem to come down from the north somewhere. I try to avoid them. Okay. Is there a settlement near here? Baker's Hope isn't too far. Keep heading north to the old town hall. You can't miss it. You think someone there will know where the Rippers hang out? Well, Baker might. Talk to him. Alright, thanks old man. Alright, so, the Rippers. That is the Raider clan that basically beat me within an inch of my life, took my motorcycle, and left me for dead. Well, let's go, uh... Let's go return the favor, shall we? With interest. Now, uh, we will not be seeing the Rippers for quite a while, actually. They're in the second half of the map. For right now, though, there will be other enemies. The first of which is right around here. This is the cannibal. All they do is smack you with their crowbars, and those attacks really do hurt. Matter of fact, on the hardest difficulty, which is what I'm playing on, I believe 31 HP is not enough to survive, so be very careful with those guys. And here's our first weapon. Well, technically second. But our first real weapon, the 9mm autoloader. Now, I wouldn't exactly call myself a gun expert, but I'm pretty sure that's supposed to be a Glock. The square shape of the slide, it looks very Glockish, so I'm gonna say that's a Glock. And here we have our second enemy. This is the Pit Fiend, also known as the Bug Dog. I guess these guys are basically the imps of this mod. They run around on all fours, they spit acid at you, and they can bite you up close. Their acid doesn't hurt too much. There is a bit of a there is a bit of RNG, depending on how much damage it uh, deals to you which is kind of how Doom works anyway. Uh, their melee attacks, though, hurt considerably worse. And here we have three more. Let's just uh, give them a little love tap, shall we? Now, the Pit Fiends are not overly strong, uh, or resilient, I should say. A point-blank shot with a pump-action shotgun will kill them in one shot, but you can also save ammo by just doing the heavy smack with the crowbar. So what I'm doing right now, this is the heavy um, heavy attack. This is the alt fire. And then you have your light attack. I use the light attack for busting open things. I never use it for enemies because it doesn't deal as much damage. We have a couple more cannibals trying to ambush us. Let's go ahead and smack them. Cave in their skulls, know what I'm saying? Ooh. Armor. Hmm. I want that. And get it, we shall. What's this? 
Know the signs. Blank stare, sweating, erratic behavior. Inform a police officer. I don't think police exist anymore. I think this place is, a. Uh... Yeah, it's pretty abandoned. So we'll just make do. Let's go into the War Games store, shall we? Now in here, yep, you can see his big beady eyes. There's gonna be more bug dogs. Let's go ahead and take care of them. Should be one more, and he is right there. Perfect. So, uh, before we go through that vent grate, we are going to go behind here. We're going to smack these boxes. Oh, something I also want to say. When you smash open something, if a piece of junk comes out, the junk is your main items in this mod. Your item count will actually go up, so... I don't know what it started. I think it was like 30 or 31. So if a piece of junk flies out, the maximum item count will actually increase. The game randomly will decide whether or not to give you a piece of junk. So it's not always guaranteed. But smack open anything you find, whether that's little tiny boxes, trash cans, trash bags. Any of those things can be holding, you know, it can hold ammo, it can hold um, armor, or it can hold junk. So it's always worth it to look. Ooh. Looks like he starved to death. Hey, cannibal. He doesn't look appetizing enough? Well, how about me? Ew. Yeah, the place is uh, definitely looking a little dead. Just like he is. And that... Is that supposed to be a torso with a top hat? That's creepy. Let's just get up out of here. So now... Old school. This must be... Uh, oh, Nintendo. Military shooters. Must be an arcade. Zombie games. Hey, Joe, you want to play a zombie game? Alright, anyway, let's go through here. Get some of these light bullets, which is our 9mm. Now, down here, uh, down there is the blue access card, but be careful. We have another new enemy waiting for us. And these ladies are nasty. These are the trash hags. Just like the cannibals, they only have... There we go. They only have melee attacks. In this case, they just rake you with those sharp claws of theirs. But they move much faster. So if you face a whole group of them, whip out some sort of weapon. Uh, but if, if there's only a couple, the crowbar works just fine. Or the other melee weapon, which we will find eventually. And look at these stylish shirts. T2, 28, USPF, 13, that's Fallout, I'm sure. And that's the Metro M. A little bit of meta there. Anyway, secret number one of five. Check out on the cash register, and there's the armor we saw. Leather armor. Leather armor is your regular armor, so it gives you 100 points. Um, there is a version of mega armor as well, which we will not find until later, I believe. So I'm not going to worry about it right now. For now, let's just have these guys infight. These guys do love to infight. And then we'll just finish them off just like that. All right, and we can continue on into this house here with our blue access card. Behind there is another secret, which we are actually very close to getting. Go through the store up here. Go ahead and grab some items. But when you pass this door, turn to your left, look into the planter for this vent door here. And drop down, drop down here, and drop down here. Ooh. A sawed-off shotgun. Oh, baby. Now, this thing is plenty powerful, but it's not as good in the range department as the pump-action shotgun, which we will be finding soon. But for now, we have that. And there's a whole bunch of bug doggies in there. We are still relatively strapped for ammo, aside from 9mm, I suppose, but we're gonna keep, uh, we're gonna keep saving. I feel like getting up close and personal with these guys anyway. Just like that. So let's go inside the vice president's office here of whatever this business is. Bottle of painkillers, which... So painkillers are, I guess, your med kits or stim packs. They give you 15 health. They are not counted as items, so you don't have to worry about collecting those. And the CEO's office is locked, as is this door here, so we must go through yet another vent shaft. Or duct, I should say. 
And another new weapon, the pipe bombs. Now these things, the trajectory is a little weird to get a little weird to get used to, but the blast radius on these things is absolutely insane. And I am actually very close to exhibiting those weapons. But before that, we have another cannibal hiding out. Go ahead and open the gray doors in there. And here we have a first aid kit, which does increase the item count. The first aid kit is a portable med kit, which you have to use from your inventory. And it gives you 25 health points back. And you can only carry 10 of those. So this is the item you can only carry 10 of. So if you already have 10, you cannot pick up another. And you'll have to either just, you know, avoid the next one you see. Or heal yourself. <clears throat> and then pick up, you know, pick the one up in front of you. Ooh. That's a little uh, disturbing. What does this say? America shouldn't have expected surrender. What the hell's going on in this place? All right, well, I've had enough of hanging corpses for one day. Let's drop down here. Let's head into these restrooms. We have some food. Food, I think, gives you two hit, uh, hit points. Nothing in those boxes. How about in here? Armor scraps. Armor scraps give you two uh, points of armor. So, okay, the food and the armor scraps are basically your health bonuses and your armor bonuses. Unlike in Vanilla Doom, where health bonuses and armor bonuses do count towards your items, the food and the armor scraps in this mod do not, in fact, count towards your item count. So, yeah, just keep that in mind. Now, we have a couple of cannibals and a pit fiend, unexpecting. Well... Let's play some bowling. Fire in the hole! Ooh, perfect. And I'm not quite sure how long the fuse on those pipe bombs lasts, so try not to hold it for too long. Go ahead and smack these cannibals. Hey, quit spitting at me. That's rude. More boxes. There we go, piece of junk in there. And then this door leads back into this uh, staircase here. Nothing else up here to get, so we can uh, move on ahead. Into this big open parking lot here with three more cannibals. Same routine. Just get that old one-two step going. And let's see, I don't think we can... Actually, yes we can. Uh... Nah. Yeah, I'll wait till later for that. There is a big group of cannibals and a new enemy behind those garage doors, and uh, <laughs> you're going to want to be a little bit more prepared for the big guy behind there. Whose name I forgot. I'll have to look back and see what he's called. But we will get there eventually. For now, let's bash open these things here fruitlessly, apparently. And inside this room here, we have another new weapon. The Machine Pistol. Which is either an Ingram or an Uzi. Or maybe it's a Mac 10 I don't know. Like I said, I don't consider myself a gun expert, but it's one of those three. There is a folding stock, but you can't unfold it. And it, just like the Glock, runs on 9mm. So while we're in here, let's go ahead and collect some more goodies. And we're going to whip our handy dandy Mr. Equalizer back out. Because we're going to have some more bug doggies. Find this piece of junk back here. Fall down. Go ahead and take care of him. And yeah. There's a whole group of trash hags in here. Look at them go. Now, this is probably a bad idea. <laughs> but I'm going to try and smack these girls. Just smack them around a bit. That being said, do not let them pin you into a corner or else you are basically screwed. You know what? We're not going to... No. We have an Uzi for a reason. Let's use it. Or Ingram, Mac-10, whatever. It's something automatic and something that fires bullets. Oh, goodness. Whoop. Hello. Alt fire time. Yeah. So the alt fire of the Uzi... Ow. You just hold it gangster style. And I think you suffer less from recoil using that, but I think it also fires faster. 
it's very interesting. There's also a glitch associated with the alt fire as well, which I will get to later when we actually are able to activate the glitch. But for now, let's just scavenge. And yeah, I can use the crowbar on those trash hags relatively easily, but I have gotten pinned into a corner before and nearly paid the ultimate price for it, so I did not want to test that, or chance that, I should say, this time around. Okay, we're just about done here. We're going to hop over this way. More 9mm bullets. Two more pieces of junk. And then secret number three is just over there, in between all those boxes. We're just going to strafe jump over there. Drop down back here for three more pipe bombs. And looky here. First aid kit, shells, 9mm. Yeah, we're getting, getting our stuff back nice and... Uh, Nice and quickly. Oh, painkillers. Perfect. All right. So from here, we have to jump through that window up there. The key that we need to progress is through a locked door. This locked door. So let's go fetch us a key. A nice, shiny, silver key. Just over here. And then just strafe run through. And there you go. There's the key. We can unlock the door from this side. And now it is time for that fight that I mentioned before. You think this switch opens this gate? Nope. You instead unlock a fight with this big lug. Now, like I said, I can't remember his name, but I think he is called the cannibal... I want to say Warlord or Overlord. It's I'm pretty sure it's one of the two. But what I like to do is get him to infight all the other cannibals if I can. But try not to take any damage from his uh, weapon there. It's a weapon you will eventually pick up. But once all the other cannibals are dead, I just chuck pipe bombs at this guy. It may take all four to kill him. Woo! Whoa, hello. Oh, well, I still hit him. All right. Fire in the hole. Oh, still alive, huh? Well, how about this? The alt fire of the sawn off shotgun. Blast both barrels at once. And then that switch in here is what opens the gate over here. Leading us to what looks like a dead end, but never fear. That area over there does have some items for us. We will get there eventually, but for now, we just have to go to the right, into this bombed out building. And it's about to get a little creepy, because... When you go downstairs... Ooh, the music stops. Mm. Atmosphere. So we have to find a way to open these shutter doors over here. And oh my goodness, what are those? These, ladies and germs, are the gas bags. Nasty floating things. Full of toxic poison. That burst like balloons when you kill them. But. If that eye of theirs opens, they will uh, get up close and personal to you. They like to charge at you, and if they touch you, they explode. And they can deal some damage. But they're very slow. And they're very easy to take out, so... They're nothing to worry about. Provided you don't let them... Get the drop on you. Go ahead and reload all of our stuff here. Alrighty. And... I think that's everything. Yeah, and I did use all my pipe bombs this time. Alright. So pull this lever to open this door and activate this generator, which opens the shutter doors in the previous room. And that green door over there is locked from this side. We have to open it from the other side. Those doors are just straight up locked, so we can't go through there at all. But now these doors are open. But why do I get the feeling something is waiting for us? Holy crap, what is that? Say hello, everybody. Say hello to the haunts. 
ghostly figures. God only knows what they actually are. But they float around and they toss these purple explosive shadow balls at you. Those things are basically rockets. If they hit you, they do a crap ton of damage. And if you are killed by them... The death message says player got, like, a cerebral hemorrhage or something. So apparently it causes brain bleeding, which is just so pleasant. But before we advance further that way, we're going to go up here through this door that opened. Go to the left here through this door here. For another haunt. Now the Uzi is really cool because it can stun lock them, so that's really useful. But we're not quite done in here. Why look at this. Secret number four. All the way through here, four. Ooh. A new weapon, the 45 revolver and a regen stem. Now what the regen stem does is it gradually increases your health for 30 seconds. And it, re it replenishes it at a pretty quick rate. Here's that green door, by the way. But we're going to go back through here. And then we are going to go back the way we came. Except we're going to go... Um, which way is it? Oh, you know what? I don't think we're there yet, actually. No, we're not there yet. Never mind. Getting a little ahead of myself. Now, there's going to be a few more haunts in here to kill. I think there's like three more. But I think... Okay, yeah. Through here. So this that's where we have to go. So for now, we'll go up here. Open this door. Go up this ramp. And look where we are. On the other side of this big ditch, I guess. Or aqueduct. Throw the switch here to activate that ladder for a shortcut. And we get our three items. A first aid kit and two pieces of junk. Now the boss music is still going on, so we got more of these haunts to take out. So what we're going to do now is we're going to plug them with a couple of 12 gauge. And then we're going to whip out our 45 Colt revolver. Oh, you little sneak. You did that on purpose. Well, that ruined that plan. Got him, though. Now I don't know... I have no way of telling which one I shot and which one I didn't, so... We'll just unload on him. Oh, I got one more shot. Oh my goodness. They never usually dodge my shots this much. Okay, I got one. Got two. You do not dodge this time. Let's see. Should I try to crowbar him? Let's give it a shot. Mm. Oh, I missed. Yeah, you like that? And I don't know what this is that drops. It's either a brain or a heart. It's disgusting is what it is. And yeah, there's a bit of an oddity with the Glock reload. If you do a dry reload, you only get 15 bullets instead of 16. I guess it's because one of the bullets in the mag is going into the chamber. And then you just reload it again to get that last bullet in the mag or something. I don't know. That's my iteration of it. But, let's get the hell out of here. And look what we have here. Our pump action shotgun. Now this thing kicks ass. It is one of my favorite shotguns ever, actually. But before that, we have a guy we gotta talk to. Don't make so much noise, man. They'll hear you. Who will hear me? The Rippers. They're swarming up there. Is there a settlement here? Yeah, there was. Welcome to Baker's Hope. I'm Gavin. I haven't seen you before. You look like a scav. What are you doing here? I'm trying to track down some thieves. You're probably after the Rippers, then. You'll need to talk to Baker, but that's going to be an issue. Fill me in. Rippers got through the gates somehow. Started killing folks. They've got people cornered in the diner in the town hall. Alright, I have questions. What do you want to know? Tell me about the Rippers. There are a few dozen of them. Rode in on trucks. I don't know where they come from. Baker could tell you more about that. They're mean bastards, though. Alright. I have another question. What do you want to know? What's going on in the diner? When the Rippers rode in, they stormed the town hall. A couple of guards locked the door from the outside to stop any more Rippers from getting in. They ran into the diner and the Rippers went after them. Haven't heard anything in a while. Not a good sign. Really pissed the Rippers off. The ones outside the hall can't get in, and the ones inside already can't get out. Alright, I have another question. What do you want to know? What about the town hall? 
Yeah, I don't know what's going on in there. Lots of gunfire. If Oaks managed to get into the bunker, they might still be alive. Bunker? There's a pre-war bunker under the hall. It's where we get our power and such. Like I said, if anyone is still alive, they'll be in there. Alright, I have another question. What do you want to know? Never mind. Time for me to go. If you're going up there, good luck. I was born lucky. So, yes, the Rippers. We are finally, finally going to see the Rippers. And these guys are indeed mean bastards, just like that Gavin guy said. There's three different varieties. One of them... Yep, there's one right there. So we're going to take this as stealthily as we can. Be quiet. So there's one that carries akimbo glocks. I think it's the one that wears the buccaneer hat. And there's one that's armed with a shotgun. There's one that's armed with a Colt revolver. So they will do some damage if you let them. But we're just going to surreptitiously take out that guy. Now, the ones on these trucks... You want to go after this truck first, because if you go after him first, he's going to see you and alert everybody else. Just like that. And then you can also get this first guy here. I'm not going to try and get those guns yet. Now there's some more hiding up in that bombed out hotel. And there's a couple of more hiding on the other side of this diner. Now the diner is also swarming with these guys, but what's a really cool feature is that if you leave these metal shutters closed, even if you fire your gun, the rippers outside will not hear you, so you can do whatever you want in there. But if you do open the shutters and fire your gun, or they fire their guns, they will hear you, and then everybody out here is going to get attracted all at once. And trust me when I say you do not want that. Let's just take care of these two. One, two. Good thing I didn't miss that hit. I'd have paid for it. Alright. The scaver's hungry, so let's go visit the diner past this very Duke Nukem 3D style door texture. Some more pipe bombs. Wait for the door to close. There we go. Alright. Got a ripper here taking a piss. He's now dead. Got a ripper here keeping guard. He's now dead. And then we have a crap ton of them all in here. All varieties of them. So you, uh... You do not want to take hits from these guys. And remember, switching to your pistol is always faster than reloading. Now one cool thing about this mod, one really cool thing, is that there's no hit scanners. Everything is projectile based, but being that these are guns, the projectiles travel damn fast. So instead of relying on your sidestepping, you just want to take cover. That switch over there opens the metal shutters. We do not want to do that. That switch over there also opens the metal shutters, so leave those alone. Go in here. One more ripper in here. And there's going to be two more inside here. Awesome. This switch opens this door here, which leads into the cooler. And there's going to be a bug dog hiding in here. Guarding a red access card. And this is what's going to get us inside Town Hall. But... Let's go ahead and reload our goodies here. Our arsenal, if you will. Alright, perfect. So you can go ahead and open the shutters now if you want, but I prefer to take a bit of a different approach. <clears throat> I guess we can go ahead and at least open these, but nah. This place isn't open for business anyway. So you don't want to go too much further up this way to get those guns because there's another Ripper facing this direction, hiding just behind that shipping container. And if he sees you, everyone else will get agitated, so let's not do that. Instead, we're going to go up here. Ooh. I forgot there's three of them. And 
And yeah, these guys will not hesitate to deal some real damage. So like I said, just take cover and you'll be fine. But now we got to worry about all those guys down there. Yeah. There's a lot of them. There's one up there. Take him out first. And now we'll just take out these uh, ground soldiers. Try to, anyway. They're having trouble aiming at me. I wonder why. Uh, was that the last one? I thought there was at least one or two more. I could very well be mistaken, but I was pretty sure there was more than that. Well, let's not let our guard down. Let's just go down there and investigate a little bit more closely. Uh-huh. I knew it. I knew there was at least one more of you. Thought you could fool me, huh? Alright. And that should be everybody. And yeah, needless to say, if you don't take this part stealthily, oh boy, it is actually pretty difficult. But we did, and it wasn't that bad at all. Took only a couple of hits. Life is good. Alright, we're going to open the door, immediately rush in, take out the ripper in there. And now we got a whole bunch of bug doggies. So what I like to do is take out... Oh, ouch. Ow, hey stupid sandbags, is take out the two on the lower floor, not get hit by the stupid acid, my goodness, and then rush up here. It's much harder for them to reach me. And then take the rest of them out. I took way too many hits there. I had literally just got done saying, oh, I only took a couple hits out there, and then look what happens. I got like three or four acid blasts right to the face, but that's okay. Throw the switch in here to open the way to the bunker, which is the exit, but we're not quite done yet. We have some more business to take care of, including one final secret, which is just through here, past a couple more rippers, right behind this here uh, shelf. I was going to say bookshelf, but those are not books. And you go all the way to the end here. A secret stash with armor scraps and a backpack full of ammo. Open the door here and you can drop on some bug doggies. And some rippers. Go ahead and take these guys off from a distance. And there we go. The coast is clear. And we got a couple of pieces of junk in here to get on top of this here bunk bed. And then there's going to be three or four bug dogs inside this next room. Get my pump action shoddy ready. And my god, do I love that reload animation. So if you reload this thing when it's dry, the scaver pulls the the slide back, loads a shell directly into the chamber, slides the slide forward to make it fire ready, and then puts the other five in the magazine tube. That is badass looking. You guys want a piece? Don't get you some. Okay, there's three of them. And now there's none. Oh. Bad guys over there. Ripper, Ripper, who's got the Ripper? I got the Ripper. And there should be four left. Bam. Everyone is dead. And there is one more item to collect. It may be a first aid kit, but it may also be a piece of scrap that I just... accidentally missed. So, like I said, I'm not going to invest too much time in finding items that I may have missed. I'll just make a quick lap around here. If I, find, if I find it, cool. If not, it's whatever. Like I said, each piece of scrap is worth $5. So if you can find all of them, by all means, do so. Uh, 
Yeah, I don't think. And I went. I went to that uh, other the other side of that ditch. So that wasn't it. Did I maybe miss something out here? See, I missed a few items in my last run as well, but I instantly remembered where they all were. They were in the uh, the ditch area that I forgot to go to initially. About on here. Anything in the uh, hotel? Aha! Uh Haha! -huh. Uh -huh. Okay. Fair game. At least I found it. And that's it. Level 1, or should I say map 51, is now done. And yeah, almost 40 minutes, so this is not a short level. Now, since the next level is not an actual map, and I can get through it really quickly, there's nothing really to show off. I'll go ahead and do that now as well. But let's get out of here first. Ooh. 100% of everything. Kills item secrets. Love to see it. So let's go ahead and enter map 52, which I believe is just called the bunker. Which it is. So let's see what this place is all about. Suddenly, the massive blast door clanks shut behind me. Its mechanism is worn, but well oiled. There is someone here, a man flanked by armed guards. His face is expressionless, his eyes unreadable behind his thick framed glasses. I keep my hands at my sides, wary of the firepower pointed at me. The man slowly looks me up and down, getting my measure. Finally, he speaks. John Baker, who the hell are you? Okay, you ain't no bandit, that much I know. So what do you want? Information. Information? You shot your way down here for that? Do you know where the Rippers are based? Why the hell do you want to know? You got a death wish or something? They tried to kill me and stole something of mine. Fair enough. Yeah, I know where their base is. That information cost me dearly, but I think you've earned that much at least. Okay, so let's have it. So these Ripper fucks started showing up from a few months back. Don't know where they originally came from. Real nasty guys. Started harassing the outlying farms and such. We tried to deal with them, but these guys are out of their fucking minds. They just kill everything and everyone. So I decided to push out some scouting parties to figure out where they camped. Go on. Okay, so we pushed the scouts out. Don't hear anything for a week. Then one guy comes back. He says they're camped out in a power plant to the north. Everyone else in the party was dead. Cut to pieces. That was a few days ago. Now, as you saw, the Rippers are here to finish off the rest of us. This power plant, how do I get to it? It's on the northern edge of town. You used to be able to just walk there, but now the Rippers have de facto control of the town, so the best way is probably through the sewers. Of course, always gotta have sewers. Oh, great. It ain't that bad. I'm sure you've seen worse. Sewers is the only way we've been able to keep in touch with our other outposts. No Rippers down there, and we keep them clear of muties, too. Okay, so how do I get access? We've tapped into them from the bunker, down in the maintenance area. I'll let you through. Hold on. He hastily scribbles something on a piece of paper and hands it to you. It's rough, but this map should get you where you need to go. Once you get out of the sewers, follow the rails east. You'll know what I mean. Okay, got it. Also, I've authorized our quartermaster to deal with you if you want. He'll be waiting in the mess hall. We can spare a little, and if you're going north, you'll need supplies. Sounds good. Rest of the bunker is off limits. Oh, and a first and final warning. Don't fuck with my guys. You so much as sneeze the wrong way, we'll fill you full of holes. You got that? Understood. Alright, so. Map 52 of the bunker. Very simple little map, just a little sanctuary. A bit of a, uh, a junction stop, if you will. And literally all there is to do here, I mean, you can speak to all the guards if you want. They have nothing important to say. What you want to do, after heading off this elevator, is head to the right inside the mess hall. And right in front of you, right there sitting down, is the Quartermaster. You're the Scav Baker warned me about. You must be the Quartermaster. Aye, that I am. I'm told you might want to trade. That's right. What'll it be, then? What do you have? I can sell you some ammo, or some spare medical supplies. Got a few spare silencers for a 9mm SMG, too. What ammo do you have? Not a lot, I'm afraid. I can give you bulk 9mm for 100. Got some loose 12 gauge I can let you have for 80. 
And I've got a few handfuls of 45 for 30 if you've got a hand cannon on you. Actually, I need something else. Uh, let's do SMG silencers. Yeah, we got a few spare silencers. Fit a 9mm SMG. I'll give you one for, mm, let's say, 200. That's steep, but I'll take it. Deal for 200. Pleasure doing business. So, now we have a suppressed SMG. This thing will not alert enemies if you shoot them, provided they don't shoot you back before you can kill them. Now, there is a bit of a bug, and I will uh, show you what that bug is in the next map, because I don't want to risk uh, angering these guys if I <laughs> fire off a shot in here. But now you want to head out of there, head to the left, and then to the right, and here's the way out. Oh boy. Into the sewers. Tally ho. Alright, and that is the first two maps. Now, I am going to go ahead and spoil the name of the next map, because there is some, uh, some prologue text, so let's go ahead and read that. Yes, it's called Radium Trail. But let's see what the prelog or prelog prologue text has to say. A cold blue light, an endless dark. Minutes turn to hours as I trudge through the foul-smelling darkness. I follow the map Baker gave me as best I can, but this place is a decaying maze. Finally, I see light up ahead. I hear voices. The blood and bodies tell me all I need to know. I check my weapons and prepare to fight. And that is that. So there's only two maps left in Dead Man Walking. So this is the, the penultimate level, and then the next one is the final one. But yeah, so pretty, uh, pretty fun so far, I have to say. Definitely difficult. I mean, this this is definitely not an easy mod. I I make some of these fights look easier than they are simply because I play this mod so much. But yeah, the Rippers very nasty bunch. the the Raider the Raider clan that you encounter after this episode. This is the only one where you see the Rippers in. So in 2063 in Afterglow, the Rippers are no more, and you instead come across a different clan of Raiders who I don't think are quite as dangerous as the Rippers are, especially the ones with the akimbo glocks. Those guys are... Ugh, I hate those guys. But, yeah. Love this mod. Love this episode. Definitely the weakest of the bunch, mainly because it's only four maps long, whereas Ashes 2063, I think, is like 10 or 11, and then Afterglow is... Uh, <laughs> Afterglow is an entirely different kind of adventure, and you'll see exactly how once we get there. But... That will be later. So, for right now, this has been the first couple maps of the first, technically the first episode of the Ashes series. And I will see you all for map 53 of Dead Man Walking. So until that time comes, I will see you all then. Bye-bye.